Hello, and welcome back to another video. This is the 10th episode of story in which the 4th Shinobi World War was over, and Naruto was finally captured by Madara. But is hope truly gone? And what the heck is happening to the Ghetto Mazo? Join our favorite blonde hero and the nine-tailed beasts on their great journey to the past. Let's see how Naruto deals with this. After you've finished watching, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. To begin, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get this show going, dot I'm bored. Uck, this is the 279th time you have said it today already, Izumo. What else can I say? This job is really the worst a Chunin could ever have. It was another average day in Kanahaga Kaur. It's worth mentioning that all the damages coming from the invasion of Otogakura were fixed rather quickly thanks to the help of Sunagakura and Kirigakura, and now, all the activities of Kanahagakura had returned to normal. And that also meant the gate guarding job had returned to the most boring job in the universe, too. Poor Izumo and Kotetsu. They were the only, stupid, ones who had dared to stay at the Hokaye's chamber when he announced that he needed two Chunin to guard the gate. And just look at how it came back to bite them in the ass now. I should have known Hokage-sama was such a troll, Kotetsu said grumpily. Oh, now you realize it, huh? Izumo snarked. The banter of the two shinobi was suddenly interrupted by a loud yell into the earphone Izumo was wearing. Izumo! Kotetsu. This is the barrier team. There is a group of people with incredible chakra coming toward your position. The estimated level of chakra. It is tail beast level. Prepare to engage. What the fuck? Invasion? Kotetsu exclaimed in shock. Impossible. There is no notice from the border of any people with that much power. Worry about that later, Izumo yelled, and brandished his weapon, a pair of giant kunai designed specifically for him. No matter what might happen, we cannot let them into the village. Cannot let whom into the village, Izumo? The two Chunin snapped their heads back upon hearing the familiar voice. Hokage-sama. Look clearly to see who are coming first, you two. Hiruzen Sarutobi said pleasantly, and pointed at the direction the group of people was arriving from. The two Chunin followed his finger, and gasped. No way. That is. The Hokage smiled. Welcome back, Team 7. It seems your mission was a success. What happened to her? Hiruzen raised an eyebrow when he saw Tsunade sulking at a corner of his office. Jiraiya shrugged. Well, obviously because of you. You're much younger than you're supposed to be, so. Everyone sweat dropped and Tsunade sulked even more. Ones with good ears could hear her mumbling in her breath something sounded suspiciously like no fair and grandpa is a jerk and so. Well, the Hokage coughed, anyway, now that everything was settled, let's get to business, he turned to Fu. So, miss. Uh. Um. And my name is Fu, s sir, Fu gulped. Being in front of such a great figure of power was a completely new experience for her. Hiruzen smiled. Don't be so tense, Fu-san. It's not like I'm going to kill you or anything. After all, Jiraiya had already told me a few things about you. Welcome to Kanahaga Kaur. We will prepare your accommodation soon. Now, Naruto, why don't you and your team show her around Konoha? As for you, Tsunade and Shizun, the Senju clan estate is always ready for the two of you. And please get ready for your job as soon as possible, there are many patients in need of your help. Alright, the Senju woman you and the Hyuga girl first. Huh? Better get going to prepare, Shizun. It's been a long time since I last stepped foot into the house anyway. After Team 7 together with Fu, Shizun and Tsunade had gone out of the room, Hiruzen looked at Jiraiya. You know what all of this means, don't you Jiraiya? The Toad Sage nodded. Of course I know. With us getting more allies and more power like this, surely the superpowers will not stay still. Kumo and Iwa might take this chance to wage war against us. It might even lead us to another world war. But. Even this is better than letting the Jin Shuriki fall into the hand of the Akatsuki. About the other countries, we can find another way. The Hokage closed his eyes. I agree with you on this. We will have to call a meeting between Kijas soon. Jiraiya, can I trust you with contacting the other Kijas for me? We cannot risk sending these messages by Hawks. Jiraiya nodded grimly. Of course, Sensei. I will depart as soon as possible. Hiruzen nodded. Good. But before you go. There is something I want you to help me with. And this is a Jiraku Ramen, the best ramen store in the world. Tuchi a Jiraku smiled when he saw Naruto lifting the curtain and enter the shop. Well, 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 if it isn't Naruto and his friends. Come on in, come on in. Naruto beamed. Tuchi Gigi. This is Fu Chan. 
She is moving to Konoha. Oh, and miso ramen for all of us, please. Not everyone is a miso ramen freak like you, Naruto, Sakura deadpan. I will take seafood with lots of vegetables, please. HN. Beef with tomato please, Sasuke, as usual. Coming right up. The ramen chef smiled brightly. He turned to Fu. And you, young lady? Fu squeaked when realizing that she was being asked so suddenly. Why yes? Tuchi smiled. Don't be scared. Every friend of Naruto is always welcome here. In fact, you can call me Tuchi Gigi like Naruto if you want, I don't mind. After all, everyone is a friend here, right? The female Jean Churiki was stunned for a moment. Then, she beamed brightly. Then I'll take what Naruto-kun takes, please, Tuchi Gigi. Alright. The ramen chef winked at her. And since this is the first time you eat at Ichiraku's, the first bowl will be on the house for you. Right at that time, the chef's daughter, Ayame Ichiraku, emerged from the back of the store. Seeing Naruto, she beamed. Ah, Naruto-kun. Long time no see. Seriously, are you getting tired of our ramen or something? Naruto grinned back. No way. Ramen is always the greatest food. Then he frowned and muttered, Damn Kakashi Sensei and Pervy Sage. Always trying to find a way to keep me from my ramen, Fu giggled upon hearing that. Sasuke and Sakura just rolled their eyes. Ayame turned her eyes toward the female Jin Churiki. Oh my. Another girl in your harem, Naruto-kun? Naruto smashed his head on the counter. Told you, said Sasuke in a smug tone. My little Naruto is making a harem. Ayame muttered, then sulked. Without me in it. Ayame Nijin, Naruto exclaimed, horrified and scandalized, with Fu blushing bright red and every other people laughing their asses off. Even Sasuke. Yes, when Sasuke of all people is forced to laugh his ass off, it definitely is something seriously funny. You're never gonna let this down, are you? Never. Chorused everyone around him, and inside him, too. Naruto groaned. All right, I think we have teased poor Naruto enough, finally, Tuchi raised his voice. The ramen is here. Enjoy yourself, children. The four bulls were set in front of the shinobi's faces. It's worth noting that there is a reason why Naruto, as well as every other customer here, loves Ichiraku ramen. Just take a look at the bowl in front of Sasuke right now, for example. The noodle strings were curling up inside the bowl like a pure cloud bathing in moonlight, and the rare cooked, juicy piece of meat was just like a little red moon hiding inside the cloud. The finely cut pieces of tomato covered around the bowl like small stars, making the bowl of ramen a brilliant illustration of nothing else but a night sky. It could be said that each Ichiraku ramen bowl is not a normal ramen bowl, but a masterpiece of art. And the taste. Well, you definitely won't have anything to complain about it, I assure you. Just look at Fu right now to see. She had finished devouring her third bowl before Sakura and Sasuke could finish their first. Wow, Sakura's eyes twitched. She really is just like Naruto, huh? Just great, Sasuke groaned. The last thing this village needs is another ramen addict like him. One more please. Chorus the two Jinchuriki next to them. Sasuke and Sakura face bombed. Yes, they are alike. Who is he? Jiraiya looked at the unconscious man in the prison cell and asked. He is a soldier of Orochimaru Kakashi and Guy managed to capture during the invasion, Hiruzen explained. Before, when Kakashi temporarily sealed his chakra with the Five Elements Seal, he was docile and harmless, but now. Well, you know what the Five Elements Seal will eventually do to its victim. And we will have to unseal him soon if we want to keep him alive. The Toad Sage snorted. So why didn't you kill him already? He's Orochimaru's follower, one who had tried to wreak havoc in Konoha. Hiruzen shook his head. It was Kakashi himself who personally asked me to find a way to help that man. From what I was told, he has some kind of evil split personality in his mind, whenever he uses the power of the Ryuadu clan he possesses, that split personality will immediately take over and turn him into a killing machine. Do you feel anything familiar in it, Jiraiya? Just like... A Jinchuriki, huh? Jiraiya grimaced. Correct, Hiruzen nodded. And to be honest, after hearing that story, I also want to help him. From what Ino Yamanaka told me, he didn't seem to want to kill people at all. So I think a way to restrain that evil personality will be a blessing to him. I doubt he wants to remain a monster of Orochimaru after all. The two Konoha shinobi looked at the unconscious man for a while. Then Jiraiya said. This person is of the Ryuadu clan, right? If he joins our shinobi force, he will be a very great asset for Konoha. Hiruzen raised an eyebrow. What do you take me for, Donzo? Jiraiya laughed. I'm kidding, 
I'm kidding. I know you will never do that. But what do you think we should do? The Hokage said grimly. I'm thinking of separating and sealing the dark personality inside him up. Without the influence of that personality, he can control the power inside him, and live as a normal human. So it means you have found a way to do that? You are even better than me at Fuinjutsu, right? Hiruzen nodded. Yes. But I can't do it alone. The seal required for this is so complex one person cannot complete it. But with you here, things will be different. The Toad Sage grinned. Then what are we waiting for? Ju Ugo opened his eyes with a groan. The cold floor of a cell was not something unfamiliar to him. He had spent a large part of his life in the cell at Orochimaru's base. What's different was the two men standing over him, staring. Good morning, the seemingly older one of them, the one with white hair, smiled. Oh no. No. Get out of here. Leave me alone. Ju Ugo's mind immediately went blank in terror. He screamed out, scrambling toward the other side of the cell. Please. I don't want to kill you. Now, see here. The man with the goatee sat and walked toward him, but that only made Ju Ugo bury himself even further into the wall. Get away. Don't go near me. I. Then he nearly jumped when the man's hand clapped down on his shoulder. Just calm down. Do you feel anything different with your body? I. Ju Ugo flinched when he heard the man saying those words. That was true. There were people here, facing him. But he didn't feel anger, madness like he used to. How? Sorry, Ryu Udukun, the man said apologetically. We have sealed up the evil personality inside you without asking you first. Now he won't be able to get out to take over your body and wreck havoc anymore. We should have consulted you before doing that. Ju Ugo's eyes widened. You. Were able to do that? Of course, the man nodded. From what I have noticed, you don't seem to like killing people, do you? Well, from now on your power is yours to control, you don't have to use it if you don't want to anymore. I assure you. Try it and you'll see. Seeing Ju Uga still hesitating, the goateed man smiled. Oh, come on. You doubt the skill of the Hokage, that much? Just try it, if anything happens, we will be here to stop it. Don't worry. Ju Uga's eyes widened even further. You are the Hokage? The Hokage smiled, and nodded. Ju Uga gulped, and tried activating his ability. Immediately, his body was filled with nature chakra. But this time, it was different. Unlike before, when he had always lost control of his body and couldn't have felt anything, now he felt it, powerful and lively inside him, just like a blazing flame had just been ignited. His body still twisted and morphed, but now, he could turn it into anything he thought of. He willed his arm to turn into a blade, and it turned into a blade. He commanded wings to extend from his shoulders, and a pair of wings indeed sprouted out. The Hokage was right, he now had complete control over his own body, without going mad. Now he felt more. Human than ever in his life. I I. It was real. I don't feel it inside me anymore. I'm free. I'm free. Then suddenly, he bolted up and kneeled before the Hokage, startling the man. Lord Hokage, thank you very much for saving my life. I swear I will do anything for you, even dying if you ask me to. The Hokage chuckled, and reached out his hands to pull Ju Ugo up. We'll talk about that later. Now, maybe you should tell me your story first. Shouldn't you? My clan has a unique ability, just like you have just seen, sir," Juugo started with a heavy voice. Thanks to that power, many great countries had tried to acquire our power for their own benefit, and many of our clan members also went and took jobs as mercenaries, too. Jiraiya scratched his cheek. I think I've heard stories about your clan. The clan base was supposed to be somewhere near the Ryuchi cave, the home of the Snake tribe, right? Yes, Juugo nodded. Most people in our clan, because of the terrifying power we have, tended to enjoy killing people, just because we could. But. Hiruzen blinked. But? You are an exception, right? You don't want to kill, Juugo sighed and shook his head. Actually, I don't mind killing if I have to do it. It's just. Just? Juugo sighed even more sadly and buried his face into his hands. When I first awakened my ability, I murdered my family. No. Mother. Father. Kotari-chan. What have I done? No. No. So that's why you. Jirai trailed off. Juugo nodded. That's right, sir. That's why I sought Orochimaru for help. I thought that with his power and knowledge, he might have a way to cure me of my. Problem. But instead. Typical Orochimaru, Jiraiya scowled. Never considers other people anything else than his tools. So. Well, after that, 
you already knew what happened, Ju Ugo finished miserably. Occasionally, he made his people fight me, sometimes for fun, sometimes to test whether they were strong enough or not. I've lost count how many people I've killed whenever I went berserk. At this point, Ju Ugo couldn't speak anymore, tears started running down his cheeks. Then he felt the man's hand grasping his shoulder again. Don't worry about the past, the Hokage said quietly. Mourning about what happened in the past won't help you getting through your guilt. True, you have killed many people, but what you should do is working to redeem yourself, not moping around and running away from people. Protecting people, doing things that make people happy, that might be a good start for you, you know. Then he smiled, a bit more cheerfully. Oh, but why should we worry about that right now? Let's get you out of here first. Nico, can you prepare accommodation for him? Somewhere near the Hokage Tower is good. When Ju Ugo followed the Anbu member out of his holding cell, free, with the Hokage walking right next to them like an equal, he couldn't help a thought popping out of his head. Konoha really is different, huh? Konoha really is different, huh? Fu marveled after her trip around Konoha. The village was totally different from what she had expected from a shinobi village. Sure, Takigakura was also a shinobi village, but it was nothing comparing to Kanahagakura. Naruto beamed. This is nothing. There are many other good things about Konoha. You must stay here some time to know all of them. Behind Naruto, Sakura and Sasuke winced slightly. Naruto's voice was cheerful and honest, without any sign of hatred or anger inside, but when they thought about what had really happened to their friend in the past. Oi ai, Naruto. Naruto turned his head and waved cheerfully. Hey, Kiba, Shino. Is it true? The Inuzuka boy asked in his breath. Is it true that you brought Tsunade-sama back to Kanoha? That Hinata can wake up? Naruto nodded, of course. Bachan is the best medic in the world, if she cannot bring Hinata back, no one can. Kiba stared. Did you just call one of the legendary Sanin grandma? Why not? Naruto shrugged. She is old, so she really is a grandma, you know. Kiba facebombed. Naruto. Excuse me, Naruto, but who is that girl behind you? Naruto blinked. Oh, I almost forgot. This is... Hi. My name is Fu. Let's become friends. Kiba and Shino were startled when the beaming face of Fu appeared right in front of them. Uh. I was from Takigakura, Fu continued cheerily. Naruto-kun and everyone here saved me from the Akatsuki, and after that, our leader assigned me to come to Konoha to join you guys. So we are going to become comrades soon. Please take care of me. Kiba sweat dropped. She's weird. Who exactly are you? The question from Shino startled everyone. Uh. What do you? Sakura started, but the Abrame didn't let her finish. Never before have my breathings reacted like this, Shino raised his hand, and a bunch of Kikaiku from inside his body crawled out. Your chakra. It's incredibly strong, just like Naruto. But somehow, it doesn't make my Kikaiku afraid like Naruto's chakra. Rather, they love it and enjoy it, and somehow, they want to follow it. Just who are you? Instead of answering, Fu stared at the tiny creatures on the Abarame's hand. Ooh, are they bugs? I love them. Shino blinked behind his shade. Kiba gaped. A girl who loves bugs? Okay, now this is what I call weird. Who the hell is she, Naruto? Oi, don't be mean to her, Kiba. Naruto protested. She is my friend, and I trust her completely, believe it. Ah, now I see. Kiba's eyes widened in realization. So this is another girl in your... Blam. Not. Another. Word. Naruto growled after punching the poor Inuzuka boy in the face, making Akamaru sitting on his head fall to the ground. Sasuke snickered. Oh, shut up, team. You know, I can't understand why you still haven't admitted that you were building a harem, the voice of Goku from inside his head chimed in. It is too freaking obvious already. I am not building a harem damn IT. Suddenly he felt Sakura's hand grasping his shoulder. Ah, uh, Naruto, she whispered with a sweat drop. Even if you really didn't, now everyone in the town has already known it. Naruto looked around, and paled when he realized what he had just done. Ugh. Then he frowned. Hey wait. What do you mean I really didn't? The pink hat shrugged. Well, if Naruto trusts you, there is no reason for us not to, Shino nodded. Welcome to Konoha, Fusan. My name is Shino Abarame, nice to meet you. He raised his hand, and Fu grabbed it with both her hands with a cheerful smile. Thank you, Shino-kun. I hope we can become best friends. Had Shino not been wearing his usual jacket, 
Everyone would have been able to see his blushing face under the high collar. This village is getting weirder and weirder. Kiba groaned. Akamaru whined. The streets were always something alien to Juugo. Well, it was obvious, considering years of imprisoning in Orochimaru's base without being able to see the sun, and his madness. Walking around in somewhere with so many other people, looking at them talking, laughing and doing daily things like this. It made him feel more human than ever. Wow, only I san. You're so big. Juugo blinked. At his feet, a little boy who was definitely no older than five was looking up at him in awe. This was the first time someone dared to go near him like that. When he wasn't even restrained. He smiled, and kneeled down to rub the little boy's head. Then suddenly he felt himself unable to move a muscle. Shadow possession jutsu success. It was Shikamaru who bound him in place with his signature jutsu. On the boy's face, there was a deep expression of rage. Ino, get the kid out of there. He barked. Choji, get ready to hit him with the most powerful technique you have. Oh no. On it. Partial expansion jutsu. Then Juugo was sent flying by a punch from the fat boy. He crashed on the ground painfully, everything, became a blur around him. He could only see a vague image of something very big starting to descend on his head. His instinct screamed at him to tap into his power, not to return fire, but to survive. But. What you should do is working to redeem yourself. No. He would not use his power. That would only prove that he was still the bloodthirsty monster who destroyed things on his whim. He would not use it, not to fight people in the village he was going to settle in. Not after that man, the Hokage, had helped him and put all of his trust in him. He closed his eyes, ready to take whatever was going to ram on his head. No. Stop. The scream rose so suddenly even Juugo himself was startled. What the? Ino, what are you doing? Everything in his eyes was still blurry, so he couldn't see clearly. But had he been able to do so, he would have seen the blonde girl of the group standing in front of him, her arms spread wide, preventing her teammates from attacking him. Just wait, the girl said, her eyes locked at the two boys. Ino, this is the monster who nearly flattened half of Konoha, don't you remember? The Shikamaru gritted his teeth. We have to stop him before it happens again. No Shikamaru, Ino yelled back. Don't you remember when I got into his mind? He tried to protect me from that monster. And his eyes right now are just like that time. You can't be serious. Shikamaru barked. If he destroys the village again, who will take the responsibility? I, Ino hesitated. Then she also barked, even harsher than the boy. But even so, you cannot just go and attack him like that. It's just wrong. He hasn't done anything wrong. Yet. Yet. Are you mad? He tried to destroy our village once, what makes you think he won't do it again? You know what Shikamaru? If you keep saying that, someone you know will be very sad. The sudden voice made everyone jump. Shikamaru's head snapped back. Asuma. Stand down, Shikamaru, the bearded man commanded. Shikamaru still looked like he wanted to protest, but a hand put on his shoulder immediately shut him up. The Jonin grinned with the cigarette still on his mouth. That man is not a threat to our village anymore. My father helped him, now he is able to live as a normal man in Konoha with us. Seeing Shikamaru still wanting to complain, Asuma's face hardened. Shikamaru, the Hokage himself has assured about his credibility. Are you questioning the decision of the Hokage? I, no. But. The Nara flinched. Ugh. Alright. So troublesome. He muttered. Choji breathed out in relief, and deflated himself. Obviously he didn't want to stumble into a fight like this, either. While the boys were talking, Ino walked to where Juugo was lying and pulled him up. Are you alright? Sorry for my teammates attacking you without asking like that. Juugo groaned and pushed himself up. No. It's alright. I was the one who attacked your village at the first place anyway. I'm sorry. Ino smiled. If the Hokage says you are a good guy now, then you are a good guy. I trust you. After all, this is not the first time I met you, right? Juugo also smiled back. Yeah. Well, that's that, Asuma smiled, throwing his cigarette away. Now, it's time for the barbecue party to celebrate Shikamaru's promotion, right? Juugo san, if you want, can you join us? I'm sure my team will want to know more about you, he looked at the orange haired man. Appalled, Juugo could only nod dumbly. Great. Then let's go. Ino smiled happily, and pulled the male's arm, as if they were already friends for a long time. Why are you all so nice to me? Juugo mumbled. I nearly destroyed your village before. Well, I'm not, 
Shikamaru muttered. Ino bonked him on the head, then smiled sweetly. I am trained in mind jutsu, Juugo kun, she said. I was the one who met you in your mindscape, remember? It's just a quick glimpse, but I could still see your eyes, they were the same as they are right now. That's why I believe in you. The eyes are the very first things to look at when you want to know if someone is truthful or not. And. Suddenly she stopped, and blushed. And. Juugo blinked curiously. Uh oh. Choji's eyes widened in horror. And. Ino's fingers started twiddling not unlike Hinata when she stood in front of Naruto. And you're kinda cute too. Let's just say that this was the first time in his life Juugo of the scales knew how it was to blush. No way. That's. It's Tsunade-sama. Tsunade-sama is back. Wow. She looks much younger than I expected. Tsunade's eyes twitched irritably as she walked along the hallway of the hospital with Naruto next to her. Am I really that old? The Uzumaki boy deadpanned. Yes. Yes you are. Then he felt Tsunade's finger poking hard on his forehead. Ow. Just because I like you doesn't mean I tolerate you from being a cheeky brat, cheeky brat, the medic said dryly. Now, this Hyuga princess girl is in this room, huh? The pair had arrived at Hinata's room. Naruto nodded, and pushed the door open. Hyashi Hyuga wasn't there. In the room, besides the unconscious Hinata, there were Neji and Hinata's little sister, Hanabi. The poor girl must have fallen asleep while looking after her sister, because her head was now resting on the mattress next to Hinata, and her hand was holding her sister's hand. Looking at the girl, Naruto had to try his best to suppress a shudder. Her face looked like she hadn't eaten for half a month, and even when her eyes were closed tight, Naruto could still feel them swollen from crying too much. And her mouth, right now, was mumbling something Naruto couldn't hear well, but he was pretty sure there was something like one each chan and wake up in it. And Neji was the one who saw them coming first. Naruto, who is this? He asked, glaring at Tsunade in suspicion. Naruto grinned. Oh, her? She is Tsunade, the best medic in the whole world. She will definitely find a way to wake Hinata up, believe it. Neji's eyes widened. She is Tsunade-sama, the Sanin? Then. Now now, Tsunade scolded. I haven't even seen the girl yet, have I? She walked across the room towards Hinata's bed and put a hand on her body, starting to look for damages. Her face turned into a frown with each hint she scanned the girl. Then after finishing, she demanded with a rather cold voice. Who was the one who did this to her? An awkward silence covered the room. Then Neji answered in a heavy tone. It was me, Tsunade-sama. Tsunade's eyes narrowed. And you are. I am her cousin, Milady. Suddenly a killing intent spiked inside the room like a raging flame. And the next thing the Hyuga boy knew was pain racking across his ribs as the legendary medic grabbed his collar and slammed him into the wall. Bachan? Naruto exclaimed in horror. But Tsunade didn't let him finish his sentence. She growled in a menacing voice. What in the nine layers of hell did you do that for? Bastard? Do you know what you have done? I, Neji could only choke out those words upon the massive killing intent aiming at him. Right at that time, Hanabi woke up. She rubbed her eyes and moaned sleepily. Ugh. What happened? Then she saw Neji being held at his neck by a strange lady she had never seen before. Her face turned from groggy to horror. Wah. Seeing Hanabi waking up, Tsunade scowled. She turned to Naruto. Who is the Jonin sensei of this girl? Uh. Naruto hesitated. It's Kurinai sensei, but... Hearing that, Tsunade dropped Neji down mercilessly and with a whoosh, she disappeared from the room, leaving the three clueless children in the room looking at each other in fear and confusion. What just happened? Kurinai jumped when she heard a loud bang on her door. The first thing she thought of was that someone was attacking her house. She pulled out a kunai, and inched carefully towards the door. But then she jumped again when a voice screamed from outside. Kurinai Yui. Are you at home? I want to talk to you. Kurinai stared at the door as if hypnotized by it. That voice was, no doubt, of a woman. But except for Ronko, what kind of woman was that rude? She hesitantly pulled the door open, and realized that she was facing a blonde woman with the biggest breasts she had ever seen. You are. Tsunade-sama. Yes, the woman, now I identified as Tsunade, answered curtly. So are you going to let me into your house or not? I have something to ask you about Hinata Hayuga. So that's what happened, huh? Kurinai nodded sadly. Yes, Tsunade-sama. After Neji attacked her like that, she couldn't wake up anymore. No one in Konoha knows why. Is there something wrong with her body? Tsunade shook her head. No, 
there is nothing wrong with her body. All the wounds are healed perfectly, I can say that her body is completely healthy now. The problem lies in her mind and soul. Kur and I blinked. In her mind and soul. Yes, Sunati nodded gravely. Based on what you told me, Hinata has an inferiority complex. Years of expectation from her father, the little sister who is better than her in everything, and a cousin who despises her with all his heart, I'm surprised she hadn't cracked down for so long with all those pressures on her head. But now, after the cowardly action that very same cousin pulled to try to kill her after she had managed to overcome her fear and stand up against him. I'm afraid her hope and faith, together with her soul, was shattered. That's why her body is ready, but her mind simply refuses to wake up. Kurinai's eyes widened in horror. But that means, Tsunade sighed. Yes. Even I cannot wake her up, if that's the case. There is only one person in this world that has a chance of bringing her back. Tsunade pushed the door of Hinata's room open. But now, there were only Naruto and Hanabi there. Where is Neji Hayuga? She barked. Naruto looked confused. Ah. Uh, he just left a few minutes ago. But. Tsunade paled. Shit. We have to find him immediately, or else Hinata might never be able to wake up. What? Neji held the point of the knife at his stomach. Tsunade-sama was the best medic all over the world. And yet, considering her action, it must mean that there was nothing she could do. Even the legendary medic couldn't help him redeem himself. There is only one thing for him to do now. If there was no way to wake Hinata-sama up, then there was no reason for him to stay in this life anymore. The knife descended on his bare torso mercilessly. Zip. Bang. Or it would be, had someone not shot it out of Neji's hand before it could connect with its target. What do you think you are doing, Neji? It was Hyashi who knocked the knife away. The man was now staring at Neji with his stern eyes. You should have just let me die, Hyashi-sama, Neji answered with a heavy voice. I have failed you, I had tried to kill Hinata-sama, and now it seems she cannot wake up anymore. If that's the case, I should also die, I couldn't fulfill my duty of protecting her in this life. I must fulfill it in the afterlife. Why do you want to wake her up so much? Hyashi asked sharply. She is much weaker than you, you yourself have said that she wasn't worthy of being a Hayuga, right? Neji sighed. I had thought that, Hyashi-sama. Until she defeated me in the Chunin exam preliminary. Hyashi's eyes widened. How hadn't he known about this? Yes, Hyashi-sama, Neji nodded. Not only had she dared to stand up against me. She had also created a completely new style to neutralize the gentle fist. It was crude and imperfect, but it worked, really worked. It actually was her, not that Sakura girl who first defeated the fate I used to believe in. She, really wasn't worthless at all. The Hyuga clan head couldn't even say anything. It's not like he hated Hinata for being weak or anything, but she really was weak for a Hyuga, and for her to actually be able to do that. Could it be what he had thought all the time was wrong, and... No, his way of teaching his children couldn't be wrong. Or might it be? Yeah, Neji finished miserably. That's why I cannot stand seeing her suffer like this anymore. If she has to die because of me. Who said she is going to die? The two Hyuga males snapped their heads back. Tsunade was standing by the door, with Kurunai next to her. Neji sputtered. Tsunade-sama? But I thought. That's what you thought? Tsunade shook her head. But if I'm right, there is a way to wake her up. And you too, she pointed at the two Hyuga, must be the ones who bring her back. An hour later, the two Hyuga were lying on the beds next to Hinata in the hospital. Inoiki Yamanaka was standing between them and the girl, holding their hands. Alright, I'm going to send you into her mind, the mind master said. I cannot go with you when you are inside her mind, and no one knows what might happen inside a mindscape, so be careful, alright? Whatever it takes to save Hinata-sama, sir, Neji answered curtly. Hyashi didn't say anything, only nodded. All right, then. Mind transfer jutsu. Neji opened his eyes to see himself standing next to Hyashi in a dark, stormy landscape. What the hell? He mused. The mind of someone like Hinata-sama can be this dark and eerie? It's not always like this. The two males jumped when the voice rose below them. They looked down, and saw. A rabbit, Hyashi stared at the tiny creature at his feet. The little critter leapt off the ground and kicked Hyashi at the head. Repeatedly. Ow. 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 Why you little? Of course I'm a rabbit, you stupid old man, it snapped angrily. What's wrong with being a rabbit? Ow. Stop that, you little. If this was not a serious situation, the sight of the mighty clan head of the Hyuga clan being slapped at the head by a tiny bunny would be incredibly awkward and hilarious at the same time. Ah. Uh. 
Finally, Neji decided to break the awkwardness. Sorry for being rude, but what? Uh, who are you? The rabbit stopped kicking Hyashi's head and said in a smug tone. I am Hinata-chan's mind guardian, of course. Hyashi blinked. Mind guardian? Of course. The rabbit snorted, sticking her, yeah, her, nose to the air. I'm the almighty mind guardian, the one who has protected Hinata-chan's mind. Yeah, what kind of mind guardian let her host fall into a coma like this? Neji muttered, but unfortunately for him, the one talking to him was a rabbit. And rabbits were just like cats, they had very good ears. Thwop. Q Neji being kicked at the head. You jerk ass bastard. The bunny screamed while kicking furiously at the younger, Hyuga's skull. It was you who did this to her. And now you go blaming me for this? Ow. Ow. Stop, please. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, Kyashi cut in. What do you mean Neji did this to her? What did he do? What did he do? The mind guardian screeched. When he nearly killed Hinata-chan in cold blood cowardly like that, he shattered her mind. I have managed to salvage most of the pieces, but the two biggest ones were still lost. Without them, even if she was able to wake up, she wouldn't be herself anymore. And that was your fault, your fault only. Neji's brain felt numb with each word. Then we will need to find those pieces of soul, right? Where is it? Hyashi suddenly asked. Who knows? The rabbit shrugged. They lie somewhere inside this mindscape, but if I knew where, I would have retrieved it already. Then we will go and find it, the Hyuga Patriarch nodded and turned on his feet. Turned out finding Hinata's soul in a completely unfamiliar landscape was harder than they had expected. They had walked for nearly an hour, but there was no sign of what might have been Hinata's soul fragment. Everything they could find was a barren, deserted land spreading into the horizon. The two male Hyuga walked beside each other in silence. None of them said anything but both their minds were filled with thought. Looking at Neji's face, even the worst mind reader could see that there was only one idea, which was to wake Hinata up at any cost. However, Hyashi's face was still as hard and stoic as always, there was no way for anyone to guess what he was thinking. Suddenly, the older Hyuga stopped dead on his track. What's wrong, Hyashi-sama? Neji blinked. We have found our target, the Hyuga patriarch said calmly. Neji blinked again. How? Where? Hyashi pointed. Is there any other reason for the Hyuga estate to exist in the middle of a barren land like this? The moment they went inside the estate, they immediately realized there was something wrong. The Hyuga estate was just like what they knew, an old style, large compound with big gardens and everything. But somehow, they could feel it. It was quiet, just like usual, Hyuga clan members don't usually run around and make noises. But the silence in the compound right now could only be seen as nothing but creepy. It felt like the compound had lacked the existence of a human being for a very long time. Walking further into the compound, the uneasy feeling of the two continued to bubble up stronger and stronger. What was happening in here? And suddenly, their question was answered by a loud noise. It was a sound of flesh crashing on wood, followed by a choke gurgle. It came from the direction of the dojo at the edge of the compound. The two Hyuga looked at each other in horror. Then without anyone asking, they both took off full speed to the direction of the dojo. The way to the dojo was not long, but somehow it felt like they were, running on an endless corridor. But finally, they arrived at the dojo, and when they saw what happened, a mixed feeling of rage, regret and shock surged up inside their stomach. A battered, bruised Hinata was sprawling on the ground, breathing heavily in pain. Looking at her, even the most clueless one could tell that she had just received a brutal beatdown. Her eyes were completely devoid of spirit, what remained in her eye sockets were just a terrifying lifeless white. And towering over her, Hyashi realized in horror, was. Himself. What? How? No, that's not it. The one looking down at Hinata on the ground was not him at all. Despite the face, the figure, the clothes being the same as him, his eyes were black at the sclerai and had an eerie shade of pink at the irises, where they were pure white for a person with the Byakugan. And the face of the imposter was cruel and sadistic, unlike the face of the real Hyashi who was always calm and stoic. That isn't a fake. Hyashi jumped. He had completely forgotten that the mind guardian rabbit was still on his shoulder. And somehow, she was able to read his mind. The rabbit continued. Those are definitely the two lost parts of Hinata-chan's soul. I haven't told you about what they are, right? Well, they are the two contrast aspects of Hinata-chan, the nice girl who is an extreme doormat to everyone around her, and the evil developed inside her mind for being an extreme doormat to everyone around her. It was that evil part which made her a stuttering mess in front of everyone, and filled her mind with fear and inferiority complex. 
and that evil part of her has taken the form of the person who she fears, yet admires the most in her life, you. Kiyoshi grimaced. So this, everything of this, happened because of him? That's right, the bunny answered curtly. You yourself are the final boss you have to get past if you want to recover Hinata Chan's soul. Isn't it ironic? Kiyoshi gritted his teeth. Final boss? All those times, he didn't know. His wife was the strongest, yet gentlest and most beautiful woman he had ever seen in his life. And Hinata, his firstborn daughter, was just like from the same mold as her. From the day his wife had died giving birth to Hanabi, he had wanted Hinata to grow up strong, to become the successor to her mother. Especially after that incident. But if that were the case, he was the very one who hindered Hinata's growth, and made her a shrinking violet like this. But if he decided to accept that fact and move on, he would have to give up everything he used to believe in the way of the Hyuga clan, the way he himself had believed in and practiced for a very long time, since he had been a child. What should he do now? Then a sudden crack sound echoed through the air. The evil Hyashi had just kicked Hinata at the face. The poor girl was sent tumbled across the ground, while the dark Hyuga clan head was laughing sadistically. Her face was now covered in blood. Why you, Neji shouted angrily and shot up from where he was crouching, but the man next to him was much faster than him. The evil Hyashi was sent flying when an enraged Hyashi Hyuga suddenly appeared in front of him and launched a vacuum palm at him, point blank. I tell you, the real Hyuga patriarch growled in rage, no one is allowed to do that to my daughter, even if that someone is myself. Wonder how they're doing in there. Tsunade muttered. It had been nearly two hours since the two Hyuga's arrival in Hinata's mind. Since then, there was no significant response from their unconscious bodies. No one could know what really was happening inside the girl's mind. Suddenly. Beep. 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 Tsunade-sama. There is a reaction from Hyashi-sama. Tsunade immediately snapped out of her idle state. Report. She barked. His heartbeat is becoming faster and more erratic. The nurse answered. It's like. He has started a fight. But. Tsunade's eyes narrowed. No, he is fighting. That must be it, she mumbled. A battle in the center of the mind? One of the doctors gasped. Is it even possible? It is definitely possible, Inoiki nodded. But it also brings a lot of risk. Damages from an outside battle might be able to be healed, but if something bad happens to the soul inside, well, let's just say it won't be good. Well, let's prepare the emergency procedure immediately. Tsunade ordered. He is safe for the time being, but we have to be ready. And call a Hyuga clan member here, just in case. Yes, ma'am. When the other nurses and doctors scattered to prepare, Tsunade looked down on Hyashi's body and grimaced. I hope you know what you are doing, Hyashi. Byakugan. Most techniques of the gentle fist taijutsu style are basically just the application of chakra to the correct points on the target's body. Theoretically, anyone with good chakra control, such as most medicnin, can use it. However, that's exactly what is different about gentle fist, correct? With the signature style of the Hyuga clan, there is no need for brute force. Instead, to make the best use of the gentle fist, accuracy is a must. That's why the Byakugan is a core element of the gentle fist. The wide line of sight, together with the deep penetration of vision, is the perfect support for this type of taijutsu. And that also means when a Hyuga activates his Byakugan in battle, he is getting serious. But when Hyashi activated his Byakugan, he immediately felt something wrong. What the? How? The body of the dark Hyashi didn't have any tenketsu at all. Instead, chakra lit up all around his body, as if he was made of pure chakra alone. He is the embodiment of a perfect Hyashi Hyuga in Hinata-chan's mind, the rabbit quip from afar. Hinata-chan has always admired you, everything about you in her mind is the best she can think about. You are the strongest, mightiest, perfect warrior of the Hyuga clan in her point of view, so be careful, this Hyashi Hyuga might as well be as strong as that. Hyashi grimaced. That's why his enemy didn't have any tenketsu. The gentle fist can deal significant damage to enemies by shutting down the flow of chakra through the tenketsu system inside the target's body. But if the target's body is made completely of chakra, well, let's just say even if there were tenketsu for him to shut down, they would just be forced open immediately. People tend to say that the most difficult enemy is yourself. And now he was going to face that most difficult people to get back his daughter. But. Even when I treated her like that, she still admired me, loved me, thought of me as a perfect person. Hyashi's hands curled into fists. A drop of tear trickled down from his eyes. I really don't deserve this. Forgive me, Hinata. My daughter. 
His nails bit into his bomb. He raised his fist, pointing it at the dark Hyashi. That's the reason why, even if you are more powerful than me, even if you are perfect, I still have to defeat you. To save my daughter. To redeem all the mistakes I have made in the past. He slipped into his gentle fist stance. Now, here I come. The dark Hyashi actually didn't even bother waiting. Right when Hyashi finished his speech, he charged at the man like a bullet, his palm lashed out, aiming at where Hyashi's heart lay, obviously aiming for a one-hit kill. But Hyashi Hyuga wasn't the strongest Hyuga for Nod. Even if his speed wasn't as fast as his doppelganger, he still had the reflex and experience of many years of fighting in wars. Therefore, predicting the attack coming from one who used the battle style of the Hyuga clan, of himself, was very easy. He flicked his hand, deflecting the strike and lashed out his own hand, intending to return the strike to his enemy's own heart. But, with the Byakugan activated, Hyashi could see even things above his head. Oh, crap. That's what allowed him to retract his hand fast enough to fend off the hand of his enemy, deflected by his hand before, suddenly stopping midway and dropping down his head with a force he had never felt himself using before. Luckily for him, he managed to stop the strike and rolled away, but his wrist still felt numb as if a hammer had just struck it. The doppelganger turned on his feet and lashed out at him again. He couldn't risk it any further. Rotation. It's worth noting that Hyashi was one of the rare people who managed to make 8 trigrams revolving heaven, a technique developed for defense, into an offensive technique. The power of his defensive technique was so great not only could it stop the enemy's attacks, it also generated a force which could suck enemies in and tear them apart like a tornado when he used it with maximum power. And now, he couldn't hold anything back. The jutsu was unleashed with everything he could pull out from his body, and his enemy was so close, there's no way he could escape from this. And it was true, the doppelganger didn't bother dodging. Instead, he matched Hyashi's rotation with his own. What the? Now it was Hyashi himself who was sent away. The power of the doppelganger's jutsu completely outmatched him, and even with his own rotation defending him, Hyashi was still sent stumbling back a few steps. Hyashi-sama, I'm coming to help you, Neji yelled, activating his Byakugan, but Hyashi snapped. No, Neji, stay there. Try to look for an opening and retrieve Hinata. Then he growled. This is my fight, and my fight alone. The problem is just how long I can keep this up. Kohai Uga pushed open the door and looked into the room. Tsunade-sama, you summoned me? Tsunade nodded. Yes. Right now I need you to pay close attention to Hyashi and Neji here with your Byakugan in case there is something happening to them. Can you do it? Ko blinked. Of course I can. Tsunade-sama, but... Then he saw the unconscious bodies of Hyashi and Neji on the bed. Dear Kemi. What happened to them? Did they? No, they're not dead, Tsunade interrupted him. However, the fight they are going through right now might be the worst fight of their lives. That's what I need you for, your Byakugan can follow and keep track of Chakra, it might be the very thing we need to help them. Is that so? Ko muttered, and activated his Byakugan. Oh, you're right, their Chakra is fluctuating as if they're in a fight. Then his eyes widened. Tsunade-sama, there is some problem. After a vicious strike, Hyashi jumped back a few steps and exhaled. The fight was becoming fiercer and fiercer. The enemy had his body and skills, and yet his power and speed and chakra far exceeded that of his own. The brutality of the doppelganger wasn't any help, either. However, Hyashi did figure out one weak point. From the start of the fight, the doppelganger hadn't once left Hinata's body which was lying on the ground all the times. Even when he had the chance, he still didn't leave the girl to attack him, he just strolled around the body, keeping Hyashi and Neji from approaching her. That must mean he couldn't leave her for some reason. And that might be Hyashi's only chance to defeat the evil him. That meant he would have to separate Hinata from the enemy first. But the problem was. How? Neji, said boy was startled when he heard Hyashi calling him. Why yes, Hyashi-sama? Do you trust me? The sudden question made the boy blink. Was this the time to talk about something like this? Sure, he had made peace with the Hyuga Patriarch before, but that didn't mean. I. His words choked midway in his throat when he saw the face of the older Hyuga. Hyashi was always serious, sure, but Neji had never seen him like this before. His face was not only deathly grim, but also showed a hint of pain and anguish and fear. The proud Hyashi Hyuga, leader of the Hyuga clan, could feel fear and anguish. I. I trust you, Hyashi-sama, finally, he managed to gulp. Hyashi nodded. Good. Then I want you to do exactly what I'm going to say now, no question, do you understand? 
Yi. The words trailed off in Neji's mouth. He suddenly got a very bad feeling about this. Wait, what are you trying to do? Don't question, Neji. The harsh reaction of Hiroshi took Neji aback. He gulped. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it, Hiroshi sighed. Very well. Then when I tell you, you have to grab Hinata and run away from here, as fast as possible, do you understand me? Neji blinked. Grab Hinata-sama? But. And realization dawned on Neji's face. He yelled. No, I can't do that. There is no way I'll leave you here too. But the boy couldn't finish his sentence, because Hiyashi had already rushed the doppelganger again. The real and fake Hiyashi once again traded blows, the flurries of gentle fist strikes coming from them had become more and more like two blurs. But that didn't make sense. Hiyashi himself knew that it wouldn't work, his enemy was so much stronger, faster and more nimble than him, so why? Hiyashi's fingers lashed out, aiming at the chest of the doppelganger. But the speed was just too mediocre, a mere flick of the hand was enough for dark Hiyashi to deflect the strike and send him back, straight into the open arms of Neji who was standing behind him. And Hiyashi smirked. His fingers flipped into a one-handed ram seal. Wait, that is. Substitution Jutsu. The thing at the doppelganger's feet which used to be Hinata's body was now Hiyashi. And now, in Neji's hands was the body of Hinata. So that is what Hiyashi-sama has been aiming for. And now his enemy is in the range of divination. The dark Hiyashi's eyes widened. Two bombs. Four bombs. Eight bombs. Sixteen bombs. Thirty-two bombs. 64 bombs, 8 trigrams, 128 bombs. The fingers of Hiyashi drilled into the body of his evil doppelganger mercilessly with such a great force his enemy was sent tumbling away. He crashed at the opposing wall painfully, making a great dent on the wooden surface. Dark Hiyashi pushed himself up and snarled. With the Byakugan activated, Hiyashi could see the body of the doppelganger riddled with holes from the 8 trigrams technique. As his enemy's body was made of chakra, Hiyashi's gentle fist techniques, if managed to land, would be very dangerous, just like that. Neji, Hiyashi yelled back. It's your chance. Take Hinata and run away from here. Neji blinked. Ah, uh, yeah. But before he could do anything, the evil Hiyashi roared. Immediately, Hinata's body on Neji's hands jerked up and trembled furiously. To Neji's horror, through his Byakugan, he could see chakra flowing out of the girl's body into the body of the fake Hiyashi at a dangerous speed. The wounds on the fake's body, which Hiyashi had tried everything he could to deal, in a blink of an eye, were now looked as if there hadn't been any at the first place. No. It meant everything he had done was for nothing. Every technique he threw, or might throw at his enemy, would be of no use as long as the doppelganger still maintained the connection with Hinata. And that also meant everything he did would just harm his daughter instead of the enemy. Evil Hiyashi's eyes gleamed dangerously, and Hiyashi understood immediately what was going to happen. I won't let you. He bellowed and leapt out, putting himself between the doppelganger and the two Hyuga children. Life flashed across his eyes when the fingers of the fake stabbed his body. He saw the times his brutal teaching techniques forced Hinata to the limit, and the girl was down at his feet helplessly, unable to move. He saw the time he compared her to her sister, that she was not suitable of being the heiress of the clan. He saw the time he told her sensei that she was not suitable of becoming a ninja. I'm sorry, Hinata. I have failed to be a good father to you. I'm sorry. This is bad, Ko exclaimed in panic. 128 Tenketsu of Hiroshi-sama were shut down. In this unconscious state, I don't think he can hold on. Tsunade's eyes narrowed. She said, Ko, can you reopen the Tenketsu on Hiyashi? Ko bit his lips. I can, but only 64 of them, I'm not skilled enough to break open all the Tenketsu shut by the 8 trigrams 128 palms technique. The only way to fully heal Hiyashi-sama right now is to force the Tenketsu open with a burst of chakra, like that Haruna girl did during the fight with Neji-sama, but. That way can also be used to break the 8 trigrams techniques? Interesting. Seems that Haruna girl is not all talk after all. Alright, Tsunade said, first, just reopen as many Tenketsu of Hiyashi as you can. I'll handle it from there. Ko blinked. You? But how? Then his eyes met Tsunade's forehead. They widened. Is that? Yes, Tsunade grinned. A series of lines started running down her forehead and stretching to her arms, body and legs. It's been a long time since I last had to release this seal, but if it's for other people's good, I won't hesitate to use it. 100 Strength Seal, Release. Dark Hyashi stepped back from the real Hyashi, and the Hyuga Patriarch collapsed on the ground into a heap. The doppelganger turned and glared at Neji, 
who was now holding Hinata on his arms. His killing intent was too clear for them to not notice. Even Neji was forced to tremble before the massive pressure pouring down onto his head. Dark Yashi started walking towards the two children. Neji gritted his teeth, nothing was more certain than that he was afraid. But. He gently put the body of Hinata down, and stood up, glaring at the advancing Dark Yashi. He slipped into his gentle fist stance, his Byakugan flared up without even flinching. Even if I have to die here, I will not let you touch Hinata-sama again. It is my duty as a member of the branch family. And the duty of a brother. Then he felt something behind him shuffling. The guardian bunny had climbed on Hinata's body, and was now sitting on her chest. Her two front paws were clapping together in front of her chest. It's time to return everything to you, Hinata-chan, she murmured with her eyes shut. Suddenly the expression of Dark Yashi twisted into a snarl of anger and fear. He charged ahead, obviously with the intention of getting past Neji to attack the two behind him. But there was no way Neji would let him do that. Chakra exploded from his body, and he performed the most powerful rotation his body could afford. Taken by surprise, Dark Yashi couldn't react in time and was sent flying back by the overcharged rotation. He backflipped a few steps, growled, and charged Neji again. A palm full of chakra and hatred lashed out towards the boy in an incredible speed. Neji managed to bash the hand away, but he couldn't expect the doppelganger to deliver a brutal kick to his stomach. He gasped and crumpled into the ground, and evil Hyashi threw him into the wall with a loud thud. Leaving the defeated Hyuga boy at where he was lying, Dark Hyashi charged at where Hinata was lying, his palms glowing brightly with chakra. The bunny opened her eyes. And melted into Hinata's body. Immediately, the girl's body exploded in a brilliant flash of blinding light. The fake Hyashi was thrown away by the sheer force of the explosion, and Neji had to hastily deactivate his Byakugan and close his eyes to avoid being blinded. The light finally faded, and Hinata let out a loud gasp. At the same time, Dark Hyashi crumpled to the ground and held his chest painfully. Hinata pushed herself up from the ground. Her eyes, while confused, had had their life and spirit returned. She looked around. Neji Niazan. Hinata Sama, Neji exclaimed in relief. You're all right. No. How dare you? The two children snapped their heads back. The Dark Hyashi, for the first time since they had faced him, spoke. His eyes weren't in the bright white color of the Byakugan anymore, now they were glowing a blood red color. You. Are not. You are not defying me. And he shot towards Hinata, the girl was now sitting on the ground cluelessly, and there was no way she could react fast enough to stop the definitely killing strike from the incoming enemy. Neji, forgetting everything about his injury, forced himself up and ran towards Hinata to protect her, but there was no way he could reach her in time. Ha. Suddenly a blur from nowhere appeared between Hinata and Dark Hyashi and rammed into him with the force of a bullet, making him stumble back. The two Hyuga children gasped at the same time. Father. Hyashi-sama. Hyashi was now standing firm in front of the two children, facing the gasping and snarling evil doppelganger with his usual stoic and stern expression on his face. The only different things were that there was completely no injury on his body anymore, and his fists were covered with two lion's heads made of glowing blue chakra. Are you two all right? He asked without needing to turn back. Hinata was too shocked to say anything. Neji could only stutter. Yeah. All right. But. What is that technique? I haven't seen anything like that before. Look at this, he told me. The technique you left for me before you passed away. The technique I swore not to use again. I'm using it to protect our daughter. Two fists. Four fists. Eight fists. Sixteen fists. Thirty-two fists. 64 fists. 128 fists. 8 trigrams. Hyashi's eyes flashed. 361 lion fists. Hitomi Hyuga had been a very sweet and gentle woman, but in battle, she had been, and still was, a nightmare to so many shinobi of the elemental continent. She was also the one who invented many techniques which were considered some of the most dangerous techniques of the gentle fist style. And one of them was the 8 trigrams, lion fist technique. Different from the other gentle fist techniques, instead of attacking the tenketsu to shut down chakra movement or striking the internal organs to kill, the lion fist shaves off chakra from where it strikes. And it usually wasn't a lethal technique, but when used in conjunction with the ultimate 8 trigrams technique, 8 trigrams, 361 palms, a technique with a speed so great it rivals the hidden lotus with 5 gates open, like Hyashi was doing right now. All chakra was ripped from the doppelganger by the flurry of strikes. Without the connection to Hinata, he couldn't recover anymore. He collapsed on the ground face down like a puppet being cut off the strings. 
The only thing showing that he was still alive was that his body was heaving up and down slightly with each breath he took. And when the three Hyuga approached him to see, they all let out a collective gasp of surprise and shock. The one lying in front of them wasn't a dark Hyashi anymore. In his place, there was a frail, fragile girl with a dark brown shade of skin. She looked up, and the three Hyuga unconsciously took a step back in horror. The face glaring at them with a pair of eyes full of hatred was the face of Hinata. So this is what that rabbit meant when she said that was Hinata-sama's evil side. Neji grimaced. Yes, but it will not remain in this world for long, Hyashi said, and raised his hand, ready to deliver the finishing blow. No, father, stop. Hyashi's hand froze in midair upon Hinata's sudden cry. What? He asked with a startled expression no one had ever expected to see on Hyashi Hayuga's face. Instead of answering him, Hinata walked from behind him up to where her evil side was lying. She crouched down, and did something no one could expect, she pulled the evil her up and hugged her. Everyone was appalled. Even evil Hinata. What? You're a part of me, Hinata murmured. You might be the evil part of me, but you are still a part of me. People cannot become good if they deny the existence of their dark side. Am I right? She looked back at Hyashi with a meaningful gaze. A good person is not someone who refuses that they have darkness in their heart, but one who accepts the darkness and chooses to never succumb to it, Hyashi nodded, and smiled. I take back my word before, you really are Hitomi's daughter. My daughter, Hinata. I'm proud of you. Hinata smiled brightly, the brightest smile anyone had ever seen her smiling. Then, she turned back to dark Hinata, who was still staring at her in shock and surprise. So what do you think? Come back to me, please. She smiled. And before their eyes, dark Hinata faded away into Hinata's body in a rain of glittering stardust. Hinata stood up and looked at her father and cousin. So I guess it's time for us to go back? And that's what happened. Everyone in the room listened to Hyashi's story with shock, fear and fascination. Even Inoiki, the specialist in human mind, had to marvel at the experience the three Hyuga had just gone through. Finally, when they finished, Tsunade said. Well, from what I saw, you don't have any noticeable injury, all of you. I think you all should go back home and rest. It has been a rough day for you. After all, she smiled at Hinata, there is a little girl who really wants to see you back, you know. The four Hyuga Boden walked out of the room, followed by the nurses and the assisting doctors. The Sanin stared at their retreating backs for a while and sighed. So in the end I was wrong all along huh? Don't say that Tsunade-sama, Inoiki, who was standing next to her, said. No one had ever expected something like this to happen. If not for you, Hinata might never be able to come back. You already helped her a lot, you know, Tsunade sighed. Yeah. Hopefully. I really don't want to admit this, but damn that Haruno girl. Helping people really does feel good. Sarutobi blinked when he heard the knock on his door. Come in. Then he smiled. Ah, Juugo kun Is there something you need? Juugo walked into the room and bowed. Hokage-sama. I'm here to tell you my decision. Is that so? The kind smile of the Hokage widened. I'm waiting to hear this. So, what is it? I, I can't believe I can live to see the day Kakashi Sensei being so generous. Alright, Naruto will not get to eat today. Ah, come on. The four members of Team 7 were sitting in Akimichi Barbecue. Today was the day Kakashi invited the team to barbecue to celebrate Naruto and Sasuke's promotion. And Kakashi and everyone else had insisted that they were not going for ramen, making Naruto pout all the way to the restaurant. Alright, said Kakashi happily when the first round of meat arrived. We all knew what we're here for today already, right? Yeah, yeah, Sakura waved him off. To congratulate Naruto and Sasuke-kun on making Chounin in their very first exam. You already told us that. No one could miss the hint of dejection in the girl's voice. Kakashi chuckled, and reached out his hand to pat Sakura on the back. Don't be like that, Sakura. You don't have anything to be ashamed of. In fact, you're the one I'm proud of the most, not Naruto or Sasuke, you know. Sakura raised her head and blinked. Eh? But I didn't make Chounin. Is the rank really that important to you, Sakura? Kakashi asked slowly. I don't want to say this, but when we first started the team, you were the weakest member of the three of you. And now, Look at you, you managed to outright defeat the strongest Shinan of the Konoha 12. Isn't that the proof that you have become much stronger, just as you told me you wish to? Kakashi's right, Sasuke added in. To tell the truth, at the beginning, I used to think that you were just an annoying, useless fangirl who came after me only because I was the last Uchiha. 
But now, I have no doubt that you are an important member of Team 7. My team. And. He tried to say something, then blushed and mumbled. Never mind. The three other members of Team 7 stared at Sasuke. The boy squirmed uncomfortably under the gazes. What? He asked irritably. A creepy smile appeared on Naruto's face. I wonder what everyone will say when I tell them you're in love with Sakura. Sasuke reddened. I'm not. Sure you do, Sasuke, sure you do, Naruto echoed what Sasuke had said to him a while ago with a smug face. You. Alright, boys, that's enough, Kakashi said, reaching over to pry the two boys off each other. Today is your celebration, not the day you two kill each other. Now, to Naruto and Sasuke's promotion, and to Team 7's future? He said, lifting up a saucer no one knew when he had poured. The three children stared at what was lying on their teacher's hand. You want us to drink sake? Naruto asked incredulously. Of course. Kakashi answered cheerfully. You're old enough to become Chunin, you're old enough to drink. What? Naruto roared in disbelief. What kind of irresponsible teacher are you? We're only. He couldn't finish his sentence, as Sasuke and Sakura had pulled his collar and blocked his mouth by their palms. Of course, we're having that drink. Sakura answered cheerfully. After all, I wanna try drinking sake once. Naruto let out muffled screams of protest behind Sakura's hand. Oh, be quiet, Sakura whispered angrily. This is our chance to see what is under Kakashi Sensei's mask. Don't you wanna see it? Yeah, we'll drink, Sasuke also raised his voice, drowning Naruto's. But you have to drink it first. Is that all? Kakashi I smiled, and lifted the saucer onto his mouth. His right hand started reaching for the edge of his mask, and Sasuke, Sakura, and even Naruto under Sakura's blocking hand, gulped in anticipation. He pulled the mask down. And Sasuke and Sakura fell down comically in disbelief. Under Kakashi's mask. Was another mask with a slit at the mouth for him to drink from there. What the hell? Sakura shrieked. A another mask. For the first time in a while, Sasuke showed an expression of shock and being weirded out horribly. I tried to tell you. Naruto mumbled in his breath. So? Kakashi I smiled again. Ready to try your first saucer of sake? The three Team 7 members gulped. Uzumaki-san. Naruto blinked seeing Kohayuga bow in front of him. Hey. What's wrong Hayuga-san? Did I do something wrong? He asked nervously. Hyashi-sama wants to meet you, Uzumaki-san. He requests that you go see him at the Hayuga compound at once. Please follow me. Usually, Naruto would have protested about the arrogance of the Hyuga man, but his curiosity about what Hyashi wanted of him had defeated his annoyance. He nodded, and followed Ko to the Hyuga compound. Hyashi-sama. Naruto Uzumaki is here. From inside the room, the voice of Hyashi rose. Show him to me, Ko. A few seconds later, the door slid open, and Naruto walked into the room. Hi, Hyashi-san. What's up? Insolence. Next to him, Ko gaped horrified. Apologize to Hyashi-sama immediately, you brat. It's alright, Ko, Hyashi cut in. Uzumaki-san, please sit down. Ko, can you please leave us alone for a while? Ko hesitated. But, Hyashi-sama. Please, Ko. Ko cringed. When Hyashi Hayuga had to press like that, he should know better than disobeying. He bowed, and walked out of the room, closing the door behind him. Naruto sat down in front of the Hyuga Patriarch and asked loudly. So what do you need of me, Hyashi-san? What is your motive of reviving my daughter? Naruto was a bit taken aback by the sudden question. What do you mean, Hyashi-san? He asked in confusion. I'm asking you, why did you go so far to wake my daughter up? Hyashi's Byakugan drilled into Naruto's sapphire ones. No one works without a motive. Going so far as to make it a team mission to get someone like Tsunade-sama back is even more of a no. So what is your intention? Naruto calmly met Hyashi's eyes without flinching, his expression hardened. So I need to have a reason to help the people I cherish? Now it's time for Hyashi to be taken aback. What? Well, if you ask me, I'd say I help people because I want to, Naruto continued calmly. I don't have a lot of friends in my past. That's why I can't stand looking at the people I knew. The ones who treat me as a friend. The ones who treat me as a human, not a monster. To suffer. Does that answer satisfy you, Hyuga-san? He pressed at those last words a bit more harshly than necessary. Hyashi didn't phase under Naruto's harsh words. So you consider he not a precious friend of yours? He asked, his eyes still fixing on Naruto's face, 
scanning for any sign of lies. Naruto nodded. Yes. I'm proud to say that she is one of my most precious people. She is the very first person who didn't run away from me, or glare at me like I was going to kill their children. I just regret that I didn't notice it earlier, so that I can pay her back for being the only one who accepted me for a while. He added bitterly, thinking back about the times he had thought of her as weird, strange, the time she had confessed to him and he hadn't even given it a thought, the time she sacrificed herself to protect him when they had faced Madara. Hyashi had been looking at him with a very strange expression on his face since Naruto started expressing himself. Finally, when the boy finished, he closed his eyes, then stood up with an unreadable face. I see. Thank you for your time, Uzumaki-san. You can go. And he walked out of the room, but when he got past Naruto, he suddenly said something which shocked Naruto and even all the tailed beasts inside him. Please take care of my daughter. Kakashi, can I ask you for a favor? Kakashi turned a page of his inherited copy of Icha Icha Emotion when he heard Sasuke's question. Hmm? You need something of me, Sasuke? You have the Mangekyo Sharingan, don't you? That question actually snapped Kakashi out of his reading enthusiasm. He lifted his eyes off his book and looked at the Uchiha boy with an alarmed eye. I have, but what do you need of me? If you are trying to look for a way to gain it. No, no, Sasuke shook his head hastily. It's just. If you really have one, can you read something for me? Kakashi blinked. Read? A few minutes later, the two shinobi were standing in the secret room of the Naka Shrine, the stone tablet of the Sage of Six Paths lying in front of them. Are you sure about this, Sasuke? Kakashi asked warily. This is the secret of your clan, I don't think I have the right to intrude. Sasuke shook his head. I'm the only one left of the Uchiha clan in this village, so I'm basically the leader of the clan now. I have the right to let you look at it when I want to. Furthermore, he bit his lip, there is a very large section of this tablet I cannot read even with my Sharingan. I have a really bad feeling about it. Kakashi nodded. I see. So you think the Mong Ekyo Sharingan can decipher it better? Yeah. So, can you? Alright, Kakashi sighed, and lifted his headband up, revealing his own Sharingan. Hey, you're right, I can read something here with my Sharingan. Then he frowned. Hmm. It says something here about the Sharingan's powers, and how they are acquired by a deep shock into the mind of a Nuchiha. And this. Damn. He grimaced. How to acquire the Mong Ekyo Sharingan? By severing the tie to the closest person you have. Meaning killing them. Who did you kill to gain this eye? Sasuke suddenly, asked. Kakashi winced, he really didn't want to remind himself about this, but. It was my teammate, Rin. He sighed. I cannot ever forget what happened that day. At that time, she was captured by Kirgakur and. He faltered here a bit. Then, he decided that reminding Sasuke about this earlier might be better for him. Well, an imposter tried to guilt trip me by transforming into her, telling me that the three tails was sealed into her and jumping into the way of my Chidori. Even until now, I still couldn't find out what happened to the real her. I see. Sasuke pondered. Then he froze. Wait. But that imposter wasn't even your real teammate, right? Does that mean? Yes, Kakashi nodded. I think acquiring the Mang Ekyo Sharingan doesn't require you to kill someone close to you in cold blood at all, a very deep and painful trauma in your heart might be able to do it. But I still wish you would never get it at all, having a trauma of that scale is not a nice thing to face at all, you know. And I think what Itachi told you had some truth in it, after all, killing someone close to you is the easiest way to have a great trauma in your mind. Yeah, Sasuke snarked. I had watched my family my clan being killed right in front of me, I wonder what might be more not nice than that? Kakashi shook his head. You can't know it yet, Sasuke. Maybe someday, when you grow up a bit more. You will understand there are things even worse than death, even worse than fear. But oh well, now it's time for our main work. Mong Ekyo Sharingan. Kakashi's eye twisted and morphed into the pinwheel shape of his Mong Ekyo Sharingan. The lone opened eye widened immediately. Wow. It really shows a lot more than what I read with my normal Sharingan. I wonder how the creator of this tablet could make it like that. What does it say? Sasuke asked, thrilled. Let's see, Kakashi said, narrowing his eye to see clearer. In here, it says that the awakening of the Mong Ekyo Sharingan is the very proof of the curse of hatred in Anuchiha's heart. It says that the Mong Ekyo Sharingan's power is based on the deepest desire in the user's heart. I don't quite understand this. I don't know many Mong Ekyo users anyway. Itachi has Tsukuyomi, the ultimate genjutsu, 
as the powers of his manga kyo, Sasuke guessed. Maybe that was because he wanted to hide his real self from other people? Maybe. But. That can't explain my Kamui power. Unless. Kakashi pondered, then grimaced. Never mind. Moving on, he continued, it states that each use of the eye's power will shave away the light of your eyes. Damn. So that's why I felt kinda dizzy in my left eye after I used Kamui. He winced. Each use of the power. Sasuke grimaced. So it means that if your eye is overused, it will eventually go blind. And Itachi's eyes too. It seems so, Kakashi nodded. But hmm. In here it also says something that if the two sibling pairs of eyes become one, the inextinguishable light will be restored, stronger than ever. And it notes some kind of ritual here. Maybe this is the way of recovering the eyesight after becoming blind? Maybe. Sasuke bit his lip. But those two pairs of eyes becoming one words, they feel disturbing. It sounds like we have to kill our brother and steal his eyes to gain back our own eyesight. That's just. Inhumane. So that's the way the Uchiha clan gained their power? By murdering their own kind? That is the true face of the clan my father had told me to be proud of, to follow their footsteps? He spat out in pain and shame. Kakashi couldn't say anything. He only reached out his hand and squeezed the Uchiha boy's shoulder in silence. Then, after a while, he pulled down his Hitae to cover his Sharingan gun and said. So, should we go? I think I should go to Tsunade-sama. Even if there is no way to prevent the deterioration from happening completely, I think she might have some way to at least do something about it. Hmm. It's true. Tsunade nodded when she put down the flashlight and stopped her scanning jutsu. There are damages in your Sharingan, especially in the retina. So what's said in that tablet was true, Sasuke muttered. The curse of hatred will take away the light of the ones who abuse the power of the manga Kyo Sharingan. Tsunade pondered in thought. Hmm. I'm not completely sure, but. Tell me, what is the power of your manga Kyo Sharingan anyway, Kakashi? Kakashi blinked. Well, mine has the power to twist the dimension and open a wormhole to suck things in, but. I see, Tsunade nodded. And you told me that Itachi's manga Kyo had the power to put people in a deep, powerful genjutsu world in which he could control everything? She looked at Sasuke. The boy nodded. The medic nodded and closed her eyes. That confirms my suspicion. You see, this is a theory I come up with based on what you told me, and the state of your eye right now, Kakashi. First, take a look at this, she grabbed a scalpel on her desk. What do you think will happen when I channel chakra into this? It will become stronger and can help us channel jutsu from them, Sasuke, who had learned about this from Kakashi, answered immediately. The Jonin also nodded in confirmation. Tsunade nodded. Alright. Well, then what will happen when much more chakra is channeled into this than it can handle? I see what you're going there, Tsunade-sama, Kakashi's eye widened in realization. You mean that just like this scalpel, if I use this power too much, more than this I can handle, it will eventually be damaged and break down? Exactly, Tsunade nodded. Those powers you told me that the manga Kyosharingan can use are all incredible powers. However, this eye of yours, as well as other Sharingan, cannot handle such powers in their normal structure. So eventually, with each use, the eyes will be damaged and your eyesight will deteriorate until there is nothing, left. When you go blind. But if there is a ritual that combines two pairs of Sharingan together. They will have the necessary structure to handle the power of the manga Kyo Sharingan, so they will not be damaged when harnessing its power, right? Sasuke finished. Correct, Tsunade confirmed. Now, about your eye, Kakashi, I might not have a way to completely prevent it, but I can still find some way to temporarily fix it after being damaged from usage. But you need to give me some time first. While I'm finding the way, you must restrain yourself from using the power, do you understand me? Kakashi nodded. Yes, ma'am. Good day to you, Tsunade-sama, and thank you. The two males bowed and walked out of Tsunade's room. When walking in the corridor, Kakashi suddenly said, you are thinking about something, are you Sasuke? The Uchiha boy looked at the Jonin in annoyance. Am I really that obvious? Kakashi chuckled. Nah. It's just that I'm becoming very good at reading people. So, what's bothering you, my cute student? Sasuke pursed his lips. It's just. I'm thinking about Itachi. He has been using his manga Kyo Sharingan for a long time. So if he doesn't have any way to fix the damage. Kakashi clapped Sasuke's shoulder. Don't worry. Sasuke. Itachi is a genius. He isn't powerful only because he has the manga Kyo Sharingan, I believe that he understands not to abuse it too much. After all, he is not really an evil monster at all, 
we will eventually find some way to get him back to the village, right? Sasuke looked out the window. The sky outside was getting dark. Yeah. I hope so. What does Gigi want of us anyway? Naruto asked his teammates in confusion. Sakura and Sasuke shrugged. The last night, Jiraiya had come to Naruto's house and told him to go to the Hokage Tower for a meeting the next morning. And it seemed all of his teammates were told to do that too, because on his way here, he had met Sakura and Sasuke also going to the tower. It was fun teasing them when seeing them walking with each other, too. It's kinda weird. Normally, a meeting of the Hokage with a team should be done in his room, right? So why are we going to the rooftop? Sakura also voiced her own question. Naruto shrugged. Who knows? Maybe it's for a big mission or something? Sasuke answered him with a HN. The team arrived at the door opening to the rooftop, and Naruto pushed it open. Hey Gigi. What's going on here? Naruto's voice trailed off when he saw not only the Hokage there, but also every one of the Hokage 12. Hearing Naruto's voice, Hiruzen, who was leaning on the rail looking around the village, turned back and smiled brightly. Ah, Naruto and his team. Come here, come here. We've been waiting for you. So, since all of you are here, we can start. Sir, yes, sir. When everyone was in their places, Hiruzen started. I guess you are all asking what I called you here for, right? Considering you gathered everyone, it must be something that requires all of us to know and do, Shikamaru said. But since there is no Jonin leader here, it can't be a team mission, so it can only mean you are going to announce something to us, right? The Hokage chuckled. As sharp as always, Shikamaru. Yes, today I'm going to announce to you. The formation of Team 11. Come in, you three. The door opened once more, and from there walked in three other people. Naruto only needed a quick glance to realize two of them. Karen-chan. So that's why you left home early today, huh? And Fu-chan too. The two girls beamed brightly. Then Naruto's eyes met the large man who was walking next to them. You're. The man bowed at him. You must be Naruto-san. My name is Ju Ugo, please help me in the future. Ju Ugo. Ju Ugo. Why does that name sound familiar? He's the man who can use nature chakra to transform in Sasuke's team, remember? Kurama said. It seems he's a good guy now. Hmm. He's indeed very powerful the last time I saw him. Well, it's lucky someone like him is on our side this time, Juki pondered. We can surely use some help in our fight against Madara later, hmm? Fusan, Ju Ugo-san and Karen-san here will join Konoha Shinobi Force's potential Jinan of the village, just like you all, starting from today. Hiruzen smiled, drawing a puff on his pipe. Now, I hereby bestow you the hit I ate of Konohaga Kour, and I trust you to hold out onto it, as it is the symbol of you being a Konoha Shinobi, and the symbol of the will of fire every shinobi of this village believes in and fights for. Welcome to Konoha Shinobi Force, you three. He pulled out three headbands from inside his sleeves. The three new shinobi of Konoha took them from his hand, even with the steel surface, the bands felt warm on their hands, and when their fingers closed around the gear, it seemed to send something into their hearts. Pride, maybe? Um. He not erased her hand. Hokage-sama. But if they are a team, they must have a Jonin sensei right? So. Ah, don't worry, Hinata. Their Jonin sensei is right here, everyone snapped their head to where the new voice had just risen from. Kakashi and all of their Jonin sensei were standing there from who knows when, waving at them. At their feet was. A purple haired woman who was hogtied and gagged and was struggling like mad to escape. Team 11, the Hokage finished. Meet Anko Mitarashi, your Jonin sensei. Anko sensei? Sakura gaped. Why was she bound and gagged like that? When she was announced her promotion by my father, she immediately bolted from the room, Asuma explained. Man, that girl sure is good when she wants to run away. You know. It took all of us here just to find where she was hiding. Yeah, Guy nodded enthusiastically. And I've never seen anyone fighting back so youthfully, either. She really will make the most youthful Joni ever. From behind, her gag, Unko mumbled a muffled protest. Jiraiya was walking on the trail in the desert leading to Sunagakur. The sun was blazing brightly and hotly above his head, but it was nothing. He had done many trips like this before in his life. Suddenly, he jerked his head up and looked at the sky. What is this bad premonition I'm feeling? A dark cloud lazily drifted across the sky, hiding the sun from view for a brief moment. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. 
MA God here, and I'm signing off.